it's all right guys we are now looking at the digestive system and the digestive system is going to start with the oral cavity that's the first place where chemical and mechanical digestion takes place and so again we have our cap from earlier and um, I actually went ahead and cut the muscles on the side of the mouth. So I cut through those huge masseter muscles that we talked about. And I also cut through the bone for the jaw um, that would have made it really difficult for it to open up this far. So in the oral cavity, obviously, you can see the teeth that are very sharp. Um, we can also see the roof of the mouth. Um, that's divided into two sections. So we have this ridged area here that's called the hard palate. And then more posterior, this region here that is smooth is the soft palate. Um, and then on the tongue, you'll notice there's all these little projections or ridges, and it's kind of hard to see. We'll see if I can get a little closer. Let's see. So you can see that there are these little ridges there. And if any of you guys have ever had a cat or ever been licked by a cat, you know that their tongues feel really rough, almost like a brush. And those little projections are projecting or pointing backwards. That helps them to be able to clean themselves and remove any excess fur. And that's one of the other reasons why um, you hear about cats having hairballs because um, they, as they are licking their fur and cleaning themselves, they end up removing fur. And if they swallow it, then that kind of sometimes becomes a little annoying for them. So those little projections are called papillae. So they have little spines and they act like a cone. And so if we look here in this area here in the back of the mouth, this space back here is called the pharynx. The pharynx is part of the digestive system, but it's also part of the respiratory system too. So it's a passageway for food, but it's also a passageway for air as it enters into the trachea. And there's a little flap right here that I'm pointing to. That is the epiglottis. So that flap prevents food and beverages from going down into the trachea. Um, but when it's not covering the trachea, um, it's allowing um, air to be able to go into the airway. So this flap keeps food funneled into the esophagus um, and prevents it from going where we don't want it to go, which is in the airway. So just behind the glottis, or sorry, the epiglottis is an opening that I'm inserting my probe into called the epiglottis, or sorry, the glottis. So epiglottis is this flap here on top, the glottis is this opening behind the flap that I'm sticking the probe into. And so that's all we want to talk about in the oral cavity. Oh, don't pause it. Um, and so we're going to move on to the neck region where we can look at um, now the second stop that food will travel after the oral cavity. So oral cavity and then the next stop would be the esophagus. So this is not the esophagus, this is actually the trachea, which we'll come back and revisit in the respiratory system. But if we move it to the side, just behind it, you can see this other little tube here. And so if I kind of lift it up with my probe, you can see that it's soft and flexible compared to the trachea, which is a little firmer and the trachea has these little rings in it. So this little soft tube back here is the esophagus. So this is going to lead down to the stomach. So we want to now kind of move on down to the abdominal cavity. So we're going to follow that pathway all the way down. We're going to kind of skip over the chest cavity for right now. And so in the abdominal cavity, probably the first thing you notice is going to be all this fatty, clumpy stuff here. This is called the greater omentum. And so this cat I mentioned earlier had a lot of fat on it. And so the omentum is also very fatty. And um, you notice in between that fat is kind of this brownish tissue. So this is mesentery, which we talked about in the shark. It helps to um, kind of hold things together. It is actually part of um, this membrane here that makes up what we call the parietal peritoneum. So the parietal peritoneum is this membrane that's lining the inner body wall. Um, and then one of the extensions of it is this greater omentum or this membrane here um, that kind of acts as a little sheet or a blanket that covers all the abdominal cavities. Um, and then there is, if you look, in between the intestines, um, other membrane here. So this is called mesentery, um, and it also has some fat in there. And you can't really see it very clearly, but there's also blood vessels. You can kind of see little thin ones here on the surface of the intestines. So there's blood vessels that kind of run through there and kind of surround the intestinal um, 
um, external part of the intestines and then those blood vessels are also internally too. So this is all mesentery here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about these organs that are in here. All of the organs that are in the abdominal cavity are covered by what we call visceral peritoneum. So this first organ here is liver. Um, you can see the stomach just behind there. So this little sac right there. The membrane that covers all these internal organs is called visceral peritoneum. We talked about that in the shark dissection as well. So the liver, notice that there are different sections of it. So there are lobes of the liver. There's a section there. There's a section up here at the top. Here's another lobe of the liver there. Um, and so in between these lobes, you'll notice this kind of dark green sac right here that I'm pointing at. That's the gallbladder. The gallbladder contains bile that it stores but the bile itself is actually produced by the liver. So the liver makes the bile, it gets stored in the gallbladder, and then that gallbladder, once food is in the intestines, it releases the bile through this little tube here called the common bile duct. So the common bile duct is gonna lead to the top part of the intestines called the duodenum. So here, under the liver, if we lift this up, we kinda of, kind of like stretch this out a little bit so you can see it better. Here's the stomach. So the upper part of the stomach where the esophagus originally attached, that's going to be called the cardiac region of the stomach, cardiac because it's closest to the heart. And then this main part here is called the body. So that's the body of the stomach. And then you have the pyloric region here where the stomach is going to curve and then eventually connect with the small intestines. So this beginning part of the small intestines right here is called the duodenum. So that's the first part. And then the small intestines has two other parts called the jejunum, which is the middle section going further down, and then the ileum, which is the last section before it joins the small or the large intestine. So we're going to lift this omentum up out of the way so we can see the intestines a little bit better. One of the other structures that we actually kind of will come back and talk about in the circulatory system is the spleen, and that's this structure right here. Um, one of the other structures you can see that's underneath the stomach is the pancreas. So I'm gonna stretch this omentum out of the way. And you can see this long uh, kind of um, pale looking structure. This is actually the pancreas. And you notice the, the surface of it looks very different compared to the surface of the other organs. Glandular tissue has kind of this um, telltale chunky appearance. And so when you're looking at glandular tissue, that's one of the ways you can kind of uh, distinguish it from some of the other structures in the area. And so, uh, again, we have our small intestines. So here's the small intestines held in place by that mesentery. It continues on around. And there's an area where the small intestines, which is right here, is gonna to join together with the large intestines, which is right here. And then there's a little pouch that sticks out called the cecum. Um, and so the cecum is at that junction between the large intestines and the small intestines. Um, and it has a lot of bacteria that's in there it's actually helpful for the cat in digesting food. Uh, and so um, it is similar to our appendix um, in humans. So we talked about the large intestines that starts here. It has three sections. It has an ascending colon that kind of goes up. And then it has a transverse colon that's kind of hard to tell that goes kind of across. And then it has a, another branch that comes down. This is gonna be the descending colon. And so um, this leads down into the lower part of the large intestines here, the colon, um, that eventually is going to lead out to the anus. Um, and so that's our digestive system. And so go ahead and review. If you need to watch the video again, please feel free to do that. Um, and then you're going to take the quiz identifying some of the structures.